Hello and welcome to the Empower 21 Leadership Podcast. My name is Caleb Worley. I'm the Executive Director of Empower 21. We're so glad you've joined us for this special edition of Leadership in the Nations through Empower 21. Today, we have a special guest with us, Pastor Cash Luna, all the way from Guatemala, Casa de Dios. It's an amazing church touching people across Guatemala and around the world. One of the greatest churches that I know of, over 25,000 people, fantastic building, but even a better leader. And Pastor Cash, we're so glad to have you with us today on Thank this you. leadership podcast. We also have with us Pastor Elmer from Casa de Dios. He'll be translating today. Elmer, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. So glad you guys are here. And today we're gonna be talking to Pastor Cash about leadership and about what God is doing in the nations. Pastor Cash, we know of your ministry and what you guys are doing around the world. And today, uh, it's just an honor for us to have you here on this podcast as really sharing with leaders from around the world. Uh, you're also part of the Empower 21 network. You help to lead the Empower 21 across Latin America. Uh, today, I want to start by asking you a question because we know the impact of your life now. But why don't we go back a few years and tell us, <laughs> just many. a few years, <laughs> tell us what it was like in those early days. How did you get started in ministry and leadership? Uh, well, uh, thank you for having me here in this podcast. Uh, uh, in the early years of the ministry, I think we need to, to understand that we are going to put the base, then we can build up oh, uh, the rest of the ministry. For example, to understand, for me to understand that we are here to serve, not to be served, yeah. is so important because it's going to be uh, the key to open many other doors to go and preach the gospel. The second one is to understand that without the anointing, we don't, we don't have nothing or not too much to do. So I was praying and I said to the Lord, if you don't anoint me, uh, and, and I will say this with all respect because I am, I am hearing Oral Roberts University, yeah. but I said without anointing, I can go and teach math or economics or statistics or another type of class, but to preach, I need the anointing. So I was, uh, praying for that until we get one small drop of the oil of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the other thing is um, many people, or me in that season, we have great and big dreams. But the Lord uh, made me to understand that it's not about to do great things, it's about to let the small things to grow up. Mm. Uh, and, and see what the Lord is gonna do. Yeah. So to be where we are now is just a consequences of serving, the anointing, a clear vision. And the other thing is uh, trust in, the, in God all the time, no matter what. Mm, that's so good. You know, as you were just saying that, I think about how that Zechariah tells us to despise not the day of small beginnings. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then it says later on in that passage, for the Lord sees the work that is done and he rejoices. So you're saying that starting out with serving, making sure you, you have the anointing and then being faithful to the vision that God has called you to in the small season in the small. produces much fruit. Yes. Yes. You know, and now your church is, you know, over 25,000 members. Yes. Your online presence is reaching millions of people on a regular basis. So as a leader, um, this is a leadership podcast, and there are people listening and watching today. What would you tell that leader who might be in the middle of his journey on how he can continue through? Because there is always difficulties or, or challenges that we have to go through. But what would you encourage that leader on principles and things that help you in leadership to keep pressing in in those sowing seasons till you get to the harvest season? Uh, well, um, I think it's a, this is a career. It's like a, a race. Um, it's not a, like a speed one, but it's a, the large one you have to be very patient and having faith. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have the 
faith to do something, but we don't have the patience to see the Lord to complete the things yeah. or fulfill it. So I said that um, keep being focuses, uh, fulfill the, the instructions of the Holy Ghost. For example, when the pandemic came, um, I was praying and the Lord started to spoke to me daily saying, I am watching you. Mm. I am watching you people. So when you heard that words every single day, you say, hey, something is happening here. Oh my God, what is this? <laughs> and the Lord says, I'm watching. And I say, what are you watching? And he says, if you are gonna fulfill my commission, even without temples mm. and buildings, and I say, of course we will, <laughs> because buildings are just resources. Yeah. Buildings cannot be vision. Mm -hmm. Vision is to make disciples for Jesus Christ, the people for Jesus. Buildings are resources. Microphones, screens, computers are resources. Mm. So if we cannot reach the people through the buildings because of the COVID or whatever, Anyway, we will fulfill the commission because <laughs> the Lord will give us the ideas. So yeah. the very first day of the, the pandemic, March 15, uh, I remember that Sunday, the, the 20, uh, 2020, we, in that Sunday, we reached through our church online 3.5 million every single Sunday speaking about Jesus Christ to the people. And I say, I cannot pull all this amount of people into the building. No. <laughs> no building exists for that. So I think is if we do not get distractions, but getting focused all the time, no matter what, mm -hmm. making disciples, because this is what the Lord command us to do, the Lord is gonna be with us. Wow. And here, when I hear you saying that, it's so interesting because many people, they know you from what they've seen. And I can remember as a young person sitting in a hotel room in the Dominican Republic on a missions trip. And as I clicked on Christian television, there's Pastor Cash Luna. Really? 15, 18 years ago, you know, in your white suit and, you know, and the, the power of God. He was almost white because <laughs> white, 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 just Benny <laughs> No, no, no. It was it's close almost, to being white. Yeah, it's close to the white. But I can remember seeing that and the power of God. And so you were, you were known uh, many times in the early days for the big meetings and for yes. uh, the power of God and the Holy Spirit flowing. But what you're saying is that it's not just the big meetings. You're yeah. saying if the meetings are taken away, What's we're still matter? called to reach and disciple people. Yes. And, and I think about how that in, in Empower 21, one of the things we try to promote and encourage people is the power of the Holy Spirit for the next generation. And you have been able to translate over decades the same serving attitude, anointing attitude, faithfulness attitude, and not just reach one generation, but reach many generations. Tell me about this journey Grace for you. Here. Well, I really don't understand too much this uh, phenomenon because it's, it's from the grace of God. Uh, I am 60 years old and my, my audience or my, yes, audience, is from, the, the strongest one is from the 20, 22 years old until the 46, that's the, the largest. But, when I go to the data, I can see people from the 17 years old yeah. until the 60s. And I say, uh, what? That's amazing. The grace with the kids, mm -hmm. for me, make, make me cry. Mm. Many kids are coming to the church uh, and they want to listen to me. And I say, but they, we have classroom for them. <laughs> they, <laughs> but they say to your parents, no, we want to, to hear Pastor Cash. And I say, but I don't dress like a cloud or something that, for the kids. And I say, 
has to be Jesus' grace because kids want to come to Jesus. Mm. So I, I, that makes me cry. So we believe in a church which is multicultural, mm -hmm. a multi, um, mm, is multicultural and multi gen, gen, uh, multi gen, gen, yeah, generation. Multi, because if we use a language that everybody can understand, uh, you can connect with them. And if the subject we teach are relevant for the people, they will listen. Yeah. But I understand this. One day I was praying, and you, do you remember this kind of, um, eh, ¿cómo se dice los, el piso, el floor? But no, yeah, okay. Um, it was made by concrete and small, uh, it's all this. ¿Cómo le dices al piso? Okay, the floor. So I was praying and I, I trying to build, visualize me in the stadium preaching, you know, mm -hmm. because this is the age where you, you want to have a dream about you. Yeah. Yeah, you dream with you uh, playing soccer or football and, yeah, yeah. and, and yeah, racing the cup. And, <laughs> and so, so it's the same in the ministry. I understand right, right. We, we, we want to dream you preaching in the whole uh, stadium full, full of people. And then the Holy Spirit says, I don't want you to watch you preaching to the multitude. And I say, what? I want you to watch the people learning mm -hmm. from me. So everything changed wow. in my mind. And I say, literally, I say, Lord, if, I, I, if you need me to, to walk on, on my hands or paint my skin by green painted, <laughs> I, I will do it if this is going to help the people to come to you. Mm. So... Um, there are, two, there are two ways to go to the pulpit. One is to fulfill your need about teaching and being you, or fulfill the need that the people has uh, or have uh, to learn mm. about Jesus. Wow. So when we switch that, everything starts to change. Wow, that's so interesting. So you shifted from centering on you being yes. the one to minister to the people, mm -hmm. to now you being used by God to minister to Very them, right. and and things shifted, and it's really been evident because out of I would say a majority of leaders, especially in Latin America, many times you get categorized into one area, and most of the time people don't make it out because they aren't transitioning to reach other generations, mm -hmm. and one of the key elements I think from what you just shared is how the Holy Spirit spoke to you. So what would you tell that young leader who might be listening to this podcast on how the Holy Spirit interacts with you on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. Because many people don't understand the, the Holy Spirit's interaction with us and our invitation into, of Him into our lives is something that is really transactional on a regular basis, mm -hmm. not yes. just in a service but in our daily lives. Yeah. So explain that a little bit to someone who might be listening on how the Holy Spirit works with you. Okay, um, I will try, I will try. Um, there you are, wrote a whole book on it, you can't no, <laughs> unpack it. There are two, no, there are two experiences that we can have with the, with the Holy Spirit, maybe three. Uh, let's see the anointing one experiences when the power is uh, flowing through you and touching the people. This is the power of Him flowing. Another thing is to have a communion with the Holy Spirit every single day. Let's see that you are talking, having a little chats with him, um, asking for instructions in the day, or maybe um, he's talking to you about some of your behaviors or something like that. This is the communion. But then there is the... Uh, exists the intimacy mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit. But it's the same, for example, you can have a communion with your wife, wherever you go, you can talk with her in the cafeteria, um, maybe here with friends in a party or dinner, whatever. 
But intimacy, you mm. need to go to your house, to your bedroom, and produce, you can produce a life. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, the intimacy with the Holy Spirit is a little bit different than the communion with the Holy Spirit. Mm. So, and the intimacy of the Holy Spirit, when you remember when Jesus says, go to your room and close the door. Yeah. Why close the door? Because when you close the door of your room, something beautiful, amazing, deep is going to happen. So, uh, for example, if the Lord wants to rebuke you, because correct you, because some of your behaviors is not all right, many people, they believe that he's going to send a prophet and he will rebuke you in, pu mm. in public. A father will never do that. <laughs> a father will call you and I say, come to my room, close the door. Mm. We need to have a conversation now. That's the way it works. Intimacy, communion, expression. Yeah. So the private life is a key, a base for the public life. Mm -hmm. This is what, how I try to, to deal or to, to have a, a um, relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and that's so important, especially for young leaders to understand the the character side, which is what the Holy Spirit builds in the intimacy. When we walked in here to this studio, we didn't look at the floor and say how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. But without the floor or the foundation, we wouldn't be able to sit in a beautiful building in the same way in our lives. And as I look at your life and your ministry and your family, you can see the expression of your relationship with the Holy Spirit privately that's now being carried out publicly. Now, in the midst of that, as a leader, we go through difficulties and things. What would you say to the person who might be listening to this, that might be in the middle of adversity? And how does the Holy Spirit interact with you to help you through those seasons that maybe aren't what you wished for, it didn't follow in line with your faith confession, but yet you find yourself in adversity because that's part of life. How do, you, how do you as a leader, what are some of the characteristics of things that you work at when you're facing adversity? Well, uh, the first thing is to accept that adversity is part of life. Mm. Sometimes we want to fight it back when we need to is resist it and trust in the Lord that everything is going to be all right. Um, the Bible, for me, when I read it, it has a little mistake. Not the Bible itself, but uh, because we know the end of every history <laughs> in the Bible. We, we need how, how David ends, how uh, Moses did it, but we don't know how our lives will end. Right, right. <clears throat> so, it's easy to say, ah, trust like David, trust like Moses, <laughs> Caleb, Joseph. Uh, it's, it's, it's very easy because you, you know the you end. You know of, the end. Of... You know the end, but what about my end? Yeah. <laughs> what am I finished? So the Lord says in the Bible that uh, there will be a um, blessed finish for those who trust in the Lord. Mm. David says, I used to be a young boy, now I get old and I, I never saw a, a, just, a, a right one, a righteous one uh, be abounded. Uh, and I said, has to be like that. Mm. Um, look at Peter. Peter passed through many adversities, but at the end he stand. And I, I will say to the generation, and I will say to myself, if I can go back in the, in the time and I can go to, to a bedroom where Cash was praying in, 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 in the middle of a, 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 the adversity or persecution or people lying about him, mm -hmm. I will say, hey, don't worry. <laughs> Everything is going to be all right. Wow. So, um... I think is when you have a faith moment and and you don't get what you was 
you were looking for, then until you get the new faith moment, mm. the bridge which is connecting one point with the other is the bridge of trusting, confidence. You still trusting in the Lord, confident, your confidence is in Him until you get the new moment mm. and then you get it. The other thing is keep your heart well. Let me, let me explain this with the sports. You can win the championship, but maybe you lose some games. Mm -hmm. And I can see no one winning the champion without losses without in the Bible, losses. some losses in, in the Bible. Mm, that's good. But what we need to keep is this. No matter how, oh, what losses we have or adversities, we are passing through, keep your heart well. Mm. Don't hate nobody. You don't need to have nothing against somebody else. I say to the people, the Lord was being called a friend of sinners. Mm -hmm. He was a friend of sinners. And sometimes we are not friends between Christians, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Be friends with sinners and then we can't be friends with Christians. Yeah, it is ridiculous. <laughs> Why? Because something is, is getting wrong in their heart. Mm. So I said, maybe I will go out of this life with some losses, but I wanna be without losses, my heart. Mm. That's all, that I can keep it. Uh, I don't know if I can say pure, but well, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is what I, I, I would say today. That's so In powerful. It makes me think of the scripture says, guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. Mm -hmm. And really God's responsibility is not to guard our heart. It's our responsibility mm -hmm. to guard yes. our hearts. Mm -hmm. um, as you're traveling now, as we're coming out of this pandemic season, you're speaking to leaders. As we're closing up this time together, what's, what's something that you're speaking to leaders now as you travel to Mexico and South America and when you're in Guatemala? What are you, what's one of the key things you're telling leaders now in this pandemic season that will help them to come out into the next season strong? I think that <clears throat> we, we came out of the pandemic uh, um, virus expression or virus contamination. But uh, we are in the middle of the consequences of the pandemic season. Mm. So there is like a monster that the monster has a tail, a big tail. <laughs> so we are walking now with the tail of that monster. <laughs> so, it's, uh, so we're still there, but the, the churches are reopening, them, but for example, 30%, 20, 25, 30% of the pastors, they quit. Mm. Some of them, they close the churches. Can you imagine how many doubts they have in their minds? How, did the Lord really call me? I, I, I try to be in their shoes oh, and I say, wow. If sometimes, with all the success that is surround you, you have doubts. I pray for my brothers. Mm. And I, I can't imagine that. Buildings are closed. Pastors, they quit. Then the other 70%, 40% says October 2021. They don't, they don't want to still working in full-time ministry. So what is left is the 60% of the 70%. So I say to the people that we are stand, please do not fight one another. Do not criticize one another. Do not point your finger against somebody because we are so few now. 
we are uh, colleagues in this battle. We are partners. No matter if your doctrine is not exactly like mine or, or other things, maybe you sing different to the Lord that I, that I am, but we are together in this battle. Yeah. Uh, and then this other 60 of the 70%, we are under attack. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that thing that the gates of the hell has been opened, but they will not uh, prevail against his church. Yeah. So I say we need to be more um, empathetic. Empathetic. <laughs> empathetic. Yes, because. So one of my the message that the Lord gave me to the people is remember Peter. Peter one day he was listening to the Lord, listening to the Father directly as Jesus, and I, I make this joke that uh, he called John and say, hey, Jesus, can you repeat that <laughs> in front of John that I am listening to the Father, that I, ha I have the kids of the, kids of the kingdom, right. I have a, 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 a chair in, around your throne. And, and, and minutes or the same day or days later, Jesus say, hey, Satan, Yes, go away. Yeah. Uh, to Peter, and then I say, maybe John called Jesus saying, please, can you repeat that <laughs> to Peter, please? <laughs> because that's the way we are. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. That's the way hey, we tell are. him how good I am. <laughs> Don't tell him that. Don't yeah. tell him that. <laughs> what, what I said is, uh, can you imagine what Peter was thinking and feeling that Jesus said, you are, we be fishing men for the kingdom. Uh, you have the keys, uh, the keys of, 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 the help, of, the, of the kingdom. You can listen directly to the voice of the Father, and then you are Satan. Yeah. It was like a, the emotions, the feelings, the thoughts are getting like a, in struggle, a complete struggle. But the, at the end, he stands. Mm. He stood up and preached the gospel. 3,000 came to Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus fulfilled his word saying, I will make you a fisher of men. Mm. And he did it. So I say to the people, trust in the Lord. You will stand. No matter how, uh, how confused was this season. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to to keep our view or the sight in Jesus Christ all yeah. the time. So even at difficulty, t difficult times, when in one moment you're feeling praised and another moment you're being rebuked, Oof. that's just part of the story. But the ending of the story was he was there in the upper room. He got the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Oof. He went and preached there uh, you know, at the square and 3,000 people were saved. Miracles, signs, and wonders. The church was started. So his ending was probably pretty good. His middle had a little problem, but then you know, God is victorious. So pastor, why don't you pray uh, right now for those that are watching this or even listening to this uh, leadership podcast. Pray for those that might be in the middle of that confusing season or maybe in the middle of a questioning season as many pastors around the world, even when they look like they're doing great, so many internally are dealing with questions and they're dealing with doubts. Would you just pray for the, those that are listening yes. and watching right now and pray for those leaders that God would just give them clarity, that the Holy Spirit would just remind them of the vision that God has called them to, that they wouldn't question their calling in ministry or their calling as an individual, but that they would have that confidence to move forward in faith. Why don't you pray for those? Yes, of course. I will do it in Spanish, so you can listen to this ah, beautiful, de, de and the beautiful language, come on. <laughs> ah? And then you can translate it, sure okay? Thing. Yes, Padre, te damos muchas gracias. Father, we just give you thanks. Por este tiempo en este podcast. For this wonderful time in this podcast. Por la gente que está conectada. For all the people that are tuning into it. Y que están pensando muchas cosas. And that are they're just thinking on so many que están things. están 
dudando de algunas promesas tuyas. That perhaps might be doubting certain promises of yours. Debido a la presión y a las cosas que están viviendo. Due to the pressure and all the ordeals they're going through. Te pido through. por sus corazones. I pray for their hearts. Te pido por sus mentes. I pray for their minds. Te pido por sus fuerzas físicas. I pray for their physical strength. Y que puedan confiar en ti plenamente. That they might trust wholeheartedly. Sabiendo que el que confía en ti. Knowing that those who trust in you. Tendrán un final dichoso. Will have a blessed que end. Su vista está puesta en Jesús. Let their sight be set on Jesus. Que su amor esté puesto en ti. Let their love be set on you. Que sus corazones no se contaminen. Let their hearts not be contaminated. Y que sepan que tú eres su padre. And let them know that you're their father. En el nombre de Jesús. In Jesus mighty name. Amén. Amen. 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 Pastor Cash, thank you so much uh, for your you. wisdom, for sharing, and for all of you that are watching or listening to this podcast, I want to encourage you You can stay in touch with Pastor Cash. Just go to at Cash Luna on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook and be a part of what God is doing through their ministry, Casa de Dios. If you want to stay connected with us at Empower 21, go to at Empower 21. And uh, we would love to stay connected with you through this podcast and through all that God is doing in the Empower 21 network. But more than anything, remember, God loves you, has a plan for your life, and we can change the world together when we follow the Holy Spirit and we disciple those that God has called us to reach. So have a great day.